In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to fix some minor damage in your own home garage using some basic tools. And thanks for joining me on this video. Now, this is my 2005 Honda Accord. is my very first car. And well, we got some damage. We were going in through a drive-through and the curb just got us. So we're gonna be using a mix of do-it-yourself products to get this repaired. And this is a type of job that you can do right here in your own home garage. So let's first start with the first step of degreasing. The first step you're gonna to wanna to do is degrease it. If you don't degrease, you can get a lot of contaminants in your paint and it's not gonna sand nice and easy. I like to use these tear away microfibers. Now you can get these at the store or even online. I also use Super Clean and I like this because it's a foamy degreaser that really agitates and gets the dirt really loose. For this, we'll give it a quick shake and the foaming action really does help to get this nice and clean. We'll let this sit for just a few moments. And we'll use two rags. I like to use one rag to get really a lot of the foaming degreaser off. And then we'll use our next rag just to do a general drying. Now let's take a look at damage. We can see some road rash here and we can see some dents along here that will require some minor body work. Now odds are if you're watching this video, you don't expect it to be perfect. You just wanna make it look a lot better using some spray cans. And that's what we're gonna show you today. Next up, to remove that dent, we're just gonna use a heat gun and a backside of a screwdriver. What I like to do is heat it up from the front side and use the backside of the screwdriver to push out the dent. By pushing out the dent, we're gonna use less filler and it's gonna be a much better repair for our do-it-yourself process. You can always use the other side of the screwdriver if you have a pointy area that you need to get out. But be very careful not to push too hard. Just a little bit of pressure will do the job. And once it's all pushed out, it's nice and even with the surface. In this next step, we're gonna use a cheap palm sander with 180 grit, and make sure that you get the interface pad as well. I'll leave a link in the description for all the products in this video. And what we're gonna wanna do here is use the 180 grit to really smooth out the surface and to get rid of all this nasty curb rash. <laughs> And you can see here, we took it down to bare plastic. This is a good thing because now we have a nice and even surface and our filler is gonna stick nicely. Now this feels nice and smooth, but you see a little indentation here, here, and here, and a little bit on the bottom, which will require just a little bit of filler to make sure it's completely smooth for our primer. Next up, we're gonna be using a UV putty filler, a spreader, and a UV light to cure it instantly. To do this step, use your Colad UV putty filler, place it a little bit, and apply it evenly. Remember that this putty is transparent, so it might not look like it's doing anything, but it is actually filling very well. Now your layup might not be 100% perfect, but do not worry about it because we can sand that in the next step. Now this filler will never dry, so you have a lot of working time to get it onto the surface until you use this UV light. Now this UV light will activate the inhibitors inside of the UV putty and it will cure it instantly. And the reason why I like using a UV putty is because there is no shrinking. Once it dries, it's completely dry. It will never shrink again. Now an alternative to doing this is just putting the putty on and putting it in the sun and it will dry, but this little flashlight will cure it. So keep in mind that when you're doing the flashlight to move it nice and slow and to do this for about a good two or three minutes and it will completely cure. Now you do not need to use the UV putty if you want. You can also use just a Polyflex putty, a similar putty that you can use to get this nice and straight. And I'll put that in the description as well. So either putty will work, but I do happen to like UV putties because they do not shrink back and they are rather quick to dry. And just a minute later, we can see it's already dry, but don't stop, make sure you're continuing to use the flashlight on the actual putty because it will continue to cure it from the outside in. Also keep in mind once more that this is a transparent putty, so even though we can still see our damage, this is completely filled, so keep that in mind when you're using this for the first time, you do not need to bunch it on, it is actually doing its job. 
For this next step, you'll need a sanding block, 80 grit, and 180 grit. This particular sanding block is a Velcro, and this sandpaper is a Velcro, also known as hook and loop, which sticks right on. You don't need to use a sandpaper. You can simply take a block with the regular sandpaper and just wrap it around, no problem. With our 80 grit, we don't want to sand too aggressively. We just want to knock down these heavy ridges right here. So that's where we'll use it. We'll use it to really get it nice and shaped. And then once we feel the shape is nice and smooth again, then we'll refine it with the 180 grit. So don't get too coarse with this right now. Let's just knock it down, give it a quick little brush over, and we can see we thought that we didn't put much on, but since it's UV and now it's sanding and it's transparent, we can see we actually did. And just about a minute of sanding, it's nice and smooth and shaped up. The reason why we don't want to use 80 completely is because it can dig into the plastic and we don't want that because it's going to be hard for us to recover from that scratch and more work. So now let's switch over to our 180 grit. We're now gonna use our 180 grit, and I like 180 because it's gonna refine and still sand. Now the reason why we're not using our machine sander yet is because a block is important to get it nice and flat. If we use our machine sander, it will be quicker, but it will not be nice and flat, and you'll notice that in a black paint job. And how do you know when to stop? Well, keep on sanding and feeling. If you feel any ridges, then most likely you're gonna to need to keep on sanding. The areas in which you will need to make sure are smooth is a transition between the original plastic and the existing paint. This is feathering. This area needs to be completely smooth, otherwise you'll see an edge when I go to primer and paint. So you can extend this area just a little bit into the existing paint to make sure you have a nice feather edge. That's the terminology that we use when blocking and sanding into existing paint. Don't forget to get the bottom as well, because that's very important to make sure that the repair is completely smoothed out. Now I'm liking the way that everything feels, except for this area right here. No problem, I'm just gonna apply a little bit more filler. But before I do that, get into the rhythm of always cleaning before you apply another substance to the actual panel. And the funny thing is, I still had a little bit of UV putty left on the spreader, so since it doesn't dry, one of the advantages and so we can just use it again and place it right over the area that needs just a little bit more of a fill. And no need to wait. In real time, we can cure this up really quick. You can see we've just been holding it over there for just about maybe 10 seconds now. And if I feel it, you can see nothing on my gloves. This is one of the advantages to this Colad filler. It dries really quick and using our flashlight it's a great combination. And just like that, it's ready to go. And we're gonna use our 180 here since it's a nice smoother layup and we don't wanna remove too much of our UV putty. There we go. I'm really liking the way that this is feeling now. It's really nice and smooth. Now it's time to feel the rest of the panel. It feels really smooth and we're gonna be doing a somewhat of a smart repair by just doing a blend in this edge over here. For this next step, we're gonna go back to using our sander 320 grit this time, and make sure you don't forget, this is what that interface pad looks like when it's detached from the actual sander. This is gonna help with those contours to give a nice smooth sand scratch. So now we can bounce back to our sander because it's already been blocked out. And a 320 grit, since it's super fine, we don't have to worry about it putting any dents or unevenness into the panel. We're just gonna be using it right now to smooth out the existing area so we can primer this. Now once this is all primer, then we'll prepare the rest of the actual panel for paint. <laughs> Now's the time to feel it. You wanna make sure that everything's nice and smooth before primer, because primer is not gonna fill in any real defects. It's just gonna fill in minor sand scratches, and that's exactly what we have here. So it looks like this is ready for primer. If it's not, don't be afraid. Go back and spend a little bit more time on those scratches to make sure it's nice and even. Now at this point, you have two options. You can either primer this area and not scuff up the rest, or you can scuff it up a little bit more in case that the primer gets on it. I'm gonna do a combination of both. 
I'm gonna scuff up just a little bit more, but not completely everything just yet, but I'm gonna put 600 grit on here because our surrounding area, that's still good paint, we don't wanna rough it up too much. <laughs> Now with 600 grit, just a few inches past our repair area, if any sort of primer gets on that area, it lands into a sanded scratch. We don't wanna do 600 grit in our repair area just yet because we want primer there first. We want our primer to stick to the 320 grit so it has better adhesion for the repair. Now for our primer, we have a few different options. We have the most expensive and the best option. This is for bigger body work. You've got Bondo, you have a full panel. You're gonna want a primer. This is a two part. So when you use that red cap at the top, you bring it to the bottom, it's going to initiate the bag inside by breaking it and it's going to mix with the primer. It's a catalyst and a primer together. This is the same type of primer I'll use on vehicles at work. This is the best option, obviously the most expensive option, but this is the same stuff that will come out of a spray gun. For our small project, it's not really needed, but we have a couple other different options. Now, this is a dupe color. You can get this at the store. It works, but not really too great, so I don't recommend that. Then we have different types of primers. I'm gonna recommend in the description, I'm gonna put a flexible primer for plastics. And you can see here that this one works on plastics and that's what you want because it's gonna be able to flex a little bit and you're gonna want that in case this ever gets hit again very lightly, it's not gonna crack. The primer's gonna have a little bit of flex in it. So we're gonna use this, we're gonna apply about three coats and let me show you how we apply it. Now by looking at this after it's been taped up, you might not notice until I actually point out, but we're gonna be primering this area and we never wanna take our tape and stop it right where we're gonna end our primer. That's gonna leave a hard line and it's gonna be near impossible to sand out. You might think it's sanded out, but you're gonna see it once the paint hits. So make sure you extend open your tape area because you don't want any tape coming right to the edge of where your primer lands. For our first coat of primer, we're gonna put it on very light and we're gonna introduce the primer to the surface itself. And just like that, it's not gonna be completely covered. We can in fact still see some areas through the paint, but we really just want this to dry. By allowing this to dry thoroughly, what this is going to do is gonna build up a resistance for our next coat to go on so we can build a little bit higher. If we were to put another coat on right now, it would just sink in and we wouldn't really get any build and we might have some issues where it could start to wrinkle. So let this just sit. We're ready for the second coat. The worst thing you can do is rush any paint. Make sure that you're taking your time in between all the steps, whether it's primer or paint. I gave about 10 minutes. Now we're ready for the second coat. And that's it. That's all we're really gonna apply. That's all it needs. When you're doing paint work, make sure not to over apply anything and you get a better result. For this next step, we're gonna use some guide coat. We're gonna use our interface pad and 600 grit and just some good old H2O. I allowed my primer to dry for a good hour. Make sure it's completely cured because if it's not, you can run into some issues and you might have to reprime. Now this is guide coat. Now you can use black spray paint, but be advised black spray paint will clog up the sandpaper. So guide coat is not going to do that. And what is your guide coat gonna do? Well, it's gonna go onto the surface of your primer very lightly. And that's gonna show us once we've sanded, it, it's gonna reveal if there's any defects or any sand scratches that still need some attention. Here, let me show you. So without using water, I can show you a little bit better. You can see we're sanding here, and once all of the guide coat is gone, we know that this area is good to go. It's ready for paint. You can see it's nice and smooth. You can see also, I'm not wearing gloves for this step. That's because I like to feel the surface with my hands with nothing in between so I can determine if it's actually ready for paint or if there's anything like in this area that needs a little bit more sanding. Your hands are a great way to feel the panel to give you a great idea. Now, we're gonna use water. You don't need to use water, but water for primer sanding is good because it extends the life of a higher grit sandpaper that's much finer, and it will help keep things a little bit cleaner. 
All I've done is I've dumped my rag with some water here and I'll just use my sandpaper. Now the reason why we're not using at this step our power sander is because it's a little bit too aggressive and we don't want to remove all of the primer. Now one thing for a beginner that's important to know is when to stop sanding. You don't want to remove all the primer and have cut throughs to the putty below, but you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. And that's what the water helps to do. It helps keep that sandpaper moving so it's nice and smooth for our paint. Now keep in mind, you'll never get a finish that's completely just primer. You're gonna have some areas that are hard edges that are gonna burn through, and that's okay. I'm gonna show you a step later on that's really gonna help you. And after it's sanded, that's what it looks like. Now that's one of the disadvantages to the cheaper primers. That's why I always prefer to use the 2K because it would never sand it off because that is a cheaper, thinner primer. But for this project, and a lot of guys at home, that's why we opted to use that particular primer. It will still work, but not as good as this one. Now for this step, all you'll need is a piece of 800 grit sandpaper. This is Eagle Brace's 800 grit sandpaper, and all I did with this is I taped off the areas I don't want sanded, and then I took the 600 grit, and with my 600 grit on the DA sander, I went ahead and scuffed up a couple areas, and I did it by hand. I scuffed up all those little tight areas, and now it's completely ready to get completely masked back off. For our next step, here are some of the things that you might need. Now, if you did not use the more expensive primer that I do suggest, then this pre-painting prep is gonna be a little bit too harsh for the surface of that 1K rattle can primer. The reason why is it will etch it just a little bit and you're gonna find it's a little bit rough. So you're not gonna to wanna to use this. So if you wanna use your glass cleaner all the way through, even from the beginning, when using that cheaper primer, this might be a better option for you. Again, I always suggest using this 2K primer in all circumstances if you can. Now, next up, since we're not using the 2K primer, we're gonna have to use somewhat of a sealer. Now, this is my little trick that not anyone really ever uses. It's an etching primer, and it goes on super thin and super light, and you can put base right over it without having to sand it. So I'm gonna show you a little trick here that not a lot of people know about. Now, next up, you're gonna make sure you have a tack rag. This has got a tacky surface to pick up any lint or debris, a clean towel, and of course, if you wanna show your support, make sure you got that Paint Society lab coat. Let's get dressed. Now the Paint Society lab coat is available on the Amazon store and it is a collaboration between Paint Society and Colad which makes a lot of great products. This is the number one paint suit that I've always have been using before it was a Paint Society uh, paint suit and it's got our trademark on the back. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. And of course you'll have it on the front as well. So let's go ahead and let's get suited up to paint. So once again, if you did use a cheaper primer, you'll notice that it did do this, and that's the reason why I used it for the video, to really show you that cheaper isn't always better. We actually have more steps to do, and we need a different cleaner. Now, you could have used this all the way through, and the reason why I didn't initially tell you to use this all the way through is because this is just a glass cleaner. It's not gonna do the same thing that the solvent cleaner originally did when we cleaned the panel. Now, this is the only type of glass cleaner you're gonna to wanna to get it doesn't have any added scents in it, it's ammonia free, and it's going to be one of the best cleaners to remove any sort of water-based contaminants like fingerprints or any contaminants that might leave a fisheye. You're gonna wanna use it. Next up, go over it with your tack rag. This is going to give it a nice finish for our paint to lay down. But again, if you did not use that 2K, you can use this quick little trick that I came up with. This is an etching primer. It's meant mainly for metal, but this will release a nice smooth primer. You don't need to sand it, but what you want is a uniform finish, like a sealer first. I pretty much say this is a sealer in a can 
for all you do-it-yourselfers. And just lightly apply it to the surface. You don't want to overdo this, and you're going to have one uniform color now that's going to be a lot easy to cover with our cheaper rattle can finish. And that's it. Just leave it like this. This is not a high build. This is not a sandable surface. This is something you just put on for your base coat to adhere to and cover much better. You won't have to worry about any fry ups or anything because this is kind of sealing it off. Well, after 10 minutes, it is ready for its base coat. Now, no sanding needed. I did choose the perfect match. I got it at my automotive store right down the street. This is B92P. That is the paint coat, Nighthawk Black Pearl. There are better options online that you can go ahead and put your paint coat in, like paintscratch.com or Automotive Touch Up, and they will mix it in a much larger can, and it probably match a little bit better. But for black, usually they match pretty well. So let's go ahead and apply a light coat first. And whenever you're doing rattle can, make sure you have a rag nearby so you can go ahead and wipe that nozzle off because it does have a tendency to spit out bubbles when the paint starts to accumulate at the tip. We're gonna start off with light coats. All right, we'll allow that to flash. We did have one more spot here. So we'll go ahead and put some paint on there. We'll allow this to flash for a good 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, we're ready for our second coat. And we'll leave it just like that. And we'll give it another 10 minutes and check it for coverage. And after another 10 minutes, you can see that the finish is exactly how we would want it. That self etching primer as a sealer works fantastic. You get a nice coverage and that's something that we do in the body shop. Our little guy over here looks pretty good. And I always like to say, get coverage plus one more coat. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Now, not to worry if we don't get paint here, scuff clear coat, once we put the clear coat on, it will shine right back up. So you don't have to worry about anything over here because we wanna make sure that this color still matches the bumper and that's the original color. So a little bit of spray can blending is what we're doing. And that's it. We're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna let it dry a half hour. We're gonna clear coat it and we're gonna be done. I've waited an hour and now I'm ready for the clear coat. Now for the clear coat, I'm not willing to negotiate and tell you you can use a cheaper one. You must use this 2K clear coat in order to get a beautiful finish. Any other clear coat, Rust-Oleum, Duplicolor, is not going to work for you unless it is a 2K product. In order to use this 2K product properly, you must take this red cap, affix it to the stem at the bottom of the can, then place it on something hard. You'll then push down on it till you hear a click. Once you hear that click, and it takes a lot of strength, we have now punctured the bladder to mix with the rest of the clear coat. Now inside the bladder, you'll find the catalyst. So the two now are going to be mixed as you shake it. Make sure you give this a good shake, and then you're ready. This is the same exact clear coat that I use out of a spray gun for the vehicles at work when we spray them from the dealership. So make sure that you're using a 2K product for your clear coat because that is how you're gonna get a beautiful finish. At this point, it's time to put your respirator on. You wanna make sure you're using one of these for all the paint products you're using today, especially this 2K stuff. It's got isocyanates in it, very dangerous stuff. You don't want this stuff in your lungs, so make sure you're putting this on your face. Now, in some past videos, what we have done is we've sanded down the surface, but today is cooler, so there's no need to sand it and then reapply base. If you ever need to sand it, you have to reapply your base. Make sure you're going ahead and doing that, because if you don't, then the base coat finish will be distorted before you put the clear coat on it. It's not gonna look good. I'm not gonna put it on too wet. I'm just gonna introduce it to the panel, and then a second coat of base, I can put it on a little bit more wetter, make it look shiny and beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
and at this edge, we'll stop right before our sanding. And if we look around, with the garage slightly vented up, there's no overspray in the air. This is looking pretty good for our first coat. So let's let it dry for a good five to 10 minutes, and then we'll apply our second coat a little bit wetter. We opted to wait 10 minutes. It's ready for its second coat. We can see it's a little bit dull in some areas. Don't worry about the dullness because in the second coat, we can now lay it on a little bit wetter. By laying it on a little bit wetter, we'll get a little bit more shine, but if we did this in the first coat, we might get a lot of runs. And this will be dry to the touch within an hour. You can remove your masking once it's dry to the touch. Give it one hour in case you have any bridging. Now over in here in this area, we'll let that cure a little bit more and then we'll show you how we do a little buffing so that will go away. Wow guys, and here it is. After only an hour, it looks even better because that clear has flowed out just a little bit. And check out a repair area. There's no sign whatsoever that there was any dent or any road rash or anything right there. The paint is actually even smoother because we cleaned up a lot of the chips. And golly, look at this thing. Completely shiny, brand new looking. All right, so we want to remove it only about an hour after if you're using this type of clear because you don't want any bridging. That's when the tape and the clear stick together and sometimes it can pull the clear coat or the paint off of the surface that you just painted. That's bridging. Now, if you have nothing that's tightly taped like this, then you don't have to remove it in an hour. You can actually remove it later on or the next day or whatever it might be. But we do have some areas since we did somewhat of a smart repair here that we want to make sure that we go ahead and remove. And guys, I'm just so excited to check it out on the rest of the car. Now, I know for sure that this bumper is going to need a little bit of a buff, but look at that, guys. Look at the match. It looks completely untouched. It looks like it's never been worked on. I mean, you can see what we just painted and what we painted in the body shop, the top part here, the bumper. It looks identical, other than the bumper looking a little bit more dull just because it's kind of old, but the color is beautiful. Oh, and check it out. Look at the blue flake. Just over a few hours ago, we had this all tore up and we did this just under three hours, the whole repair, and it's looking fantastic. I love B92P, what a beautiful color that Honda invented for this vehicle. So we'll continue the unmasking and then we'll see what she looks like when she's all back down. Oh yeah, this thing looks killer, man. Beautiful, what a finish. Mm. Loving it. Awesome. Awesome. Look at that. Ready for the car show. Now the last step right here is it's a little bit fuzzy, a little bit dry because of the overspray, but we got ourselves 2000 grit sandpaper and we're barely going to go over the surface here and this is going to smooth out the transition. You don't want to over sand it, so just barely go over it. I suggest nothing really lower than the 2000 and then we'll just take our buffer right here and we'll polish this up. Just a little bit of polish. And that's perfect. It's completely gone. There is no transition between the old and the new. And just like that, with a little bit of a wipe, it's completely smooth. And this thing is looking banging pretty good. Let's lower this car and get it ready to show you what it looks like.
And there she is, all back on the ground. Take a look at that, guys. We did it right here in our own home garage. It looks fantastic, and you can do the same exact thing. Now, some things I know you're probably wondering, can I spray my whole car with these spray cans? Of course you can, but believe it or not, it's gonna be cheaper and better and more efficient to get yourself a compressor and paint gun set up. These spray cans can add up pretty quickly, and well, you can't really spray flat surfaces really well with them. Just small projects is where this niche is for these actual spray cans. Now these spray cans are not a high solids finish, but they will hold up outside and you will not have any peeling or fading paint, just as long as you take care of your car's finish. You can buff the surface, but make sure that you're using no less than I would say a 1500 to 2000 grit, because this is a little bit of a thinner clear coat, again, coming out of a spray can. You can buff it, do whatever you need to do to it, just like regular paint, but give it a good 24 hours before you start to get on it. Let it fully cure. I hope this really helped you out, and I hope you can use this on your own project. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.